Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. Kelly O'Hara, Stephen Pasquale, and Hunter Foster are returning to Broadway in the new Jason Robert Brown and Marsha Norman musical, The Bridges of Madison County. Under the direction of Bartlett Shear, it will open on February 20th at the Schoenfeld Theater. And I'm here in the rehearsal room to meet the company and bring you a sneak peek. saying, you know, when I, when I introduced you all, I was like, perfect casting for this. What has it been like working on this musical? Oh my God. Well, it's been one of the most fun things I've ever done. And it's, it's very moving. One of the, I, I don't know if I should share this, but when we rehearsed it for Williamstown, basically we cried for four weeks. We just, right? I mean. Yeah. And for all the right reasons, which is not often the case out of town. But it, yeah, it, it was wonderful. Uh, just the creative team, uh, Marsha, Jason, and Bart, they are so informative, they are so supportive, they demand your input, which for us is great, and uh, we're having we're having uh, a great time together, and I think, I mean, the two of us, and I think the whole cast, I think I can speak for the whole cast as far as the kind of fun we're having with the piece. It's such a rich... Here we are. Thank you for opening your rehearsal room. What was it like for you today as the director? Um... I'm always nervous when all the media folks show up. Uh, you know, it's so intimate, the work we do, you know, it's so private and you kind of have to build a little bit of a shell around it so that when suddenly all these people come in and they're like inside with you, even though we've done it before, it suddenly feels quite exposed. So I think we're ready for it to happen, but um, it's always um, a little bit nervous making. Well, this was gorgeous today to watch all of this. Tell me what attracted you to this project and why you wanted to do it, Bart. Uh, it, uh, that's a really good question. Um, a lot of people have uh, different experiences of the book or the film. It's either their favorite thing ever or they didn't like the book or they loved the movie or whatever. I didn't really have those things. I was approached by Kelly, who is my favorite person in the world, and she liked this material and she said, would I come work on a workshop with it, uh, on it? I didn't really know Jason, and I didn't really know Marsha. So I read it, and I thought it was, the book was actually quite extraordinary. I had not read the book itself when I read the book of the thing, and I thought, well, this is pretty incredible, and I haven't never seen the movie. Um, then we did a workshop, which was quite moving, and then I read the book, which was, you know, it's a, be it's a beautiful book for what it is, but it's not my exact thing. I would probably have to say that my initial thing in all of these circumstances is, A, the collaborators. Do I have great people at this? And the second one is, um, does, does the material make sense for singing? And it's really, really been a beautiful experience all the way along. It's very special piece. How cool was today for you? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, uh, this is my first like big Broadway like press day. Um, you know, I've had like little, little things, but this is like awesome and big deal. Um, but you know, there's there's so much emotion in the room, and you know, we're we're only a week in, so. To get to perform this material and to be around, you know, this this cast, we've all gotten close so fast. So I'm really looking forward to the next, you know, few months we have together. Are you doing double duty? No, I just finished Wicked last night. So last week I was doing double duty, but now now it's all bridges. So what was that first week like playing Fierro in Wicked and rehearsing this? <laughs> it was hard, you know, because I I'm here like eight hours a day rehearsing, and I kind of get this in my head, and I'm trying to digest the material. But luckily I've been in Wicked for you know like six and a half months now, so I'm, I had Fierro in my body, and I was able to go back pretty easily and and feel it out and reconnect. So it wasn't as hard as I anticipated, but I'm definitely. I'll definitely get more sleep now that I uh, <laughs> now that I'm only doing one. Talk about this role you're taking on. I play Michael, uh, Michael Johnson. I play the, uh, Kelly and Hunter's son. 
and I, I'm 16 years old. I'm kind of stuck in the middle ground of adolescence, whether uh, deciding whether I want to be a farmer or go on to pursue other interests of mine and maybe become a doctor. So that's where my my character develops a lot of angst and a lot of anger is, you know, because he's so stuck and he doesn't know where he's going to go. So, I, I, um, like myself and Caitlin, who plays Carolyn, um, we kind of ground the family and we cause a lot of conflict that, you know, uh, makes Francesca choose between Robert Kincaid, well, Stephen Pasquale, and, and the family. And so that's the cool part about the show is the audience is constantly guessing, you know, which side she's going to take because, you know, we're, we, we're in desperate need of her, but yet she has this love for him. And uh, so it's cool. It's cool to develop that. And what has it been like working with this creative team? Oh, I mean, it's talk about a dream team. I grew up uh, loving, you know, Marsha's work in Secret Garden. I, I did Secret Garden multiple times growing up, so that was exciting. And, uh, you know, Jason's music, Parade, last five years, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan. And to be able to develop something of his and have him pull you into a room and say, I've been working on this, just, do you mind singing it for me? It's like any kid's dream. I mean, my friends are like mind blown that I'm actually working with this, with this group of people. And, uh, and Bart, I mean, his inspiration is, is I mean, his outlook and, and the way he directs is so inspiring and, and amazing for an actor. Um, yeah, I'm just in awe every day coming to work and being able to be in the same room and working with these people. How exciting was today for you? It was really exciting. Oh my gosh. Um, it's kind of nerve-wracking, as it is. There are a lot of people, a lot of cameras. But it's amazing to be able to preview the show and show people a little glimpse of what this, this production is going to be. Talk about your audition and your callback when you found out you had this role yeah. in this musical. Um, it was kind of crazy. I auditioned back in April of this year, um, and I actually had mono at the time. <laughs> um, and so that was interesting. Uh, but I had about three auditions and callbacks over the course of like two weeks I want to say and getting through those was was kind of rough uh, but I did it and I ended up getting the part I did the show in Williamstown which was an incredible experience and I'm lucky enough to be doing it again now so tell me what it's been like working and working now with this creative team it's mind-blowing they are all so talented so creative and so so present all of the time I love every second of it Talk about the role. Uh, the role is Carolyn Johnson. I'm Bud and Francesca's 14-year-old daughter. Uh, she's nervous and trying to figure out what she's doing with her life, and you get to see her grow up into the woman she becomes. And working with Derek. Uh, he's amazing. He's great. It's wonderful. Uh, we are brother and sister, and we have a really close relationship on stage, and it's been great to like build that and figure it out. So. Now, the song you sang today, talk about where it fits into the show. Well, you know, it's sort of a flashback, the way it happens in the show. Um, she and, and the idea behind it is that it's a community that comes together, and um, uh, you're not alone. And, and, and it's very much a part of rural communities. I mean, it's also about, I mean, you can say the same thing about New York, where it comes to, like, 9-11 or, 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 or whatever, or, or Sandy. You know, we all, that, you know, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like that. It's like, you know, I remember I was doing work for um, Hurricane Sandy back, and, and and I remember going to Staten Island and seeing the whole community coming together and, and making food for each other and, and taking care of each other and like, like helping each, going from house to house and helping each other, bring each other water and like, and it's that kind of thing. It's, it's literally, it's not just you're by yourself and your house got damaged. It's like, no, we're all Staten Islanders. We're going to come together and we're going to help each other and rebuild Staten Island. It's the same thing with Iowa. It's like if, 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 if the farmer down the road gets hurt and we're all going to bring, we're going to bring food to them. We're going to do the, help, help them with our crops. We're going to get him back on his feet again. And so that's kind of what the, the, um, the, the song was about. And talk about working on a new musical, because you write musicals, that whole process of what you like. Um, I just think, you know, the creative process is, is kind of the, the, the fun part. I mean, Bart says all the time it's about, about fun, and there is something fun about it. It's like, you know, when, when there's a new idea that sort of like pops up that wasn't there before, or when, when a character makes a choice that he may not have, I don't know, that, that's suddenly brand new, and, and there's that spark of like, Oh my God! We've, we we're enriching this this story and making it deeper, and, and it just it's just it really really exciting and thrilling. It's, it was interesting. I'm, I'm, there's a show that I'm writing that I'm, I'm doing. Uh, I was doing a reading at night, and so I was having these experiences in the daytime with bridges, and then going doing my reading at night and having the same. And it just it was just something really magical about the creative process. So, yeah.
congratulations. What has it been like working on this musical? It's been an amazing process. This is my Broadway debut, and to get to sing Jason Robert Brown's music and work with Bart Shear and Kelly O'Hare and Stephen Pasquale, who I admire so much, has been um, a really wonderful experience. Talk about the beautiful song we heard today and where it takes place with your character. Sure, so we heard Another Life today, which is sung by Marion, who is um, Robert Kincaid's ex-wife. And it happens um, in the middle of the first act, when um, he and Francesca are preparing a very intimate meal together. And um, the song kind of provides a window into his past and some information that he's perhaps not willing to divulge at that time with her, but it gives the audience a window into where he's coming from. What a way to make your Broadway debut. Is this whole experience surreal for you? Absolutely. Um, to make my Broadway debut, but also uh, I play two roles in the show. I play Marion in the first act and Kiara in the second act. So um, to not only make the debut, but to make it with two roles is outstanding. <laughs> Talk about work. beautiful. The score is stunning. Tell me what it's been like working on this, collaborating with Marsha. Marsha and I had worked on a, a piece called The Trumpet of the Swan together and just loved writing with each other and we said we have to do a real musical and this is what came up for us and every day we've been able to just parse sentence by sentence, word by word of this, this iconic novel and just draw, it, we were able to draw so much from it and it ends up being so meaningful to each of us. I think both of us really feel something so personal about this show. I, I loved every second of it. It has been a very steady and very beautiful process. See, I love that you base this on the book. Oh yeah. Well, I've never seen, like I said, I've never really seen the movie. I didn't want to do an interpretation of the interpretation. I wanted to go to the source and see sort of what that, what that was and let it build its own way from there. I feel like there's a reason that many people love the book. Let's start there and see what it is. You had the rare opportunity of taking this out of town to Williamstown, which is very rare nowadays with a musical. What you learned from that process? I wouldn't say that I learned. I mean, what we needed was to have an audience watch the show and to feel where the audience connected to it and to feel where the audience did not engage as much. And that was a glorious opportunity to do that up there at Williamstown. It was that, first of all, the theater was just great and the production was sensational. But the audience was also very, very sophisticated and very smart and, and very open to what we did. So we had, it really, I'd say most of what happened at Williamstown was that we were encouraged, that we sort of said, yes, that's the road we were going down, let's go further, let's do that. Uh, it was, oh, it's just great. So the show's uh, very similar. We changed one song, and, you know, that's really... Brilliant cast. Oh, the best. I just, you know, I, you get to write for the best musical instruments in the entire world. That's, I, to have Kelly and Stephen and Hunter and Whitney, and it's like, it's unreal what I get to have sing these songs. It's amazing. Th this is, I'm pretty sure, the best versions of these songs you'll ever hear. I mean, you know, it's hard to think 200 years in the future, but I think what Kelly and Stephen do embodies exactly what I wanted. So take me back to the beginning. How did this all come about? Uh, I got a phone call from James Lapine. And James said, um, they, and the man is here, Aaron Priest, the, the rep for, the agent for uh, Robert Waller, they would like to make a movie, I mean a musical of Bridges of Madison County, and would you like to write the book? And James said, oh, you really don't want me. You need Marcia Norman. So then Aaron called me, and I thought, Ah, Jason's been talking about wanting to do a Traviata. This is a this is that opportunity for him to do a Traviata. And all I have to do is build the world around the two people, the two lovers, and we're done. So that's what happened. Um, I wrote a, kind of a treatment uh, for Aaron, and uh, that's the agent, and also for Robert Waller. Because I had to clear what I was about to do, which is I'm going to build a town now around your lovers. Um, and I'm going to find a way to keep Robert in the second half. You know, there's after he leaves, there's a lot of activity to happen, and but we need we can't lose him because it's too beautiful. So I I had to clear that with them, and then once I had that, I sent it to Jason, and he said I'm in. And then Bazzetti, just uh, John Bazzetti, my agent, had the thought of, well, let's get Kelly. Let's send that treatment to Kelly. And she said, I'm in. And then Kelly called Bart, and he said, I'm in. And then we went through a day of talking to producers, and they all said, we're in. And then we picked Jeffrey and Stacy and Jerry Frankel. And that was it. We were on the road. That was, it was just like that. 
It doesn't get done that way. No, it doesn't get done that way. But we decided that the, the, the title was so strong and Kelly was so powerful and we were so committed, Jason and I. We had just done a piece, um, an orchestral piece for, for at the Kennedy Center that we, and we loved working together. It was so easy. And um, so we, you know, it, it just worked beautifully all the way through. And Jeffrey and Stacy, the producers, uh, were willing to give us workshops when you wouldn't normally get them, you know, like before the end of the first act and after the end of the first act. You know, we had four of them, so they weren't just trying to fix what was there. It was like they were willing to wait for us to actually complete the work. Jason had another musical during that time. I had, you know, so it, it took us a while, but we, we feel like we have it now. And after Williamstown was a beautiful experience for all of us and gave us a chance to see what the effects of the show were. I mean, men in particular come out sobbing sobbing and so in all of us apparently there is that that lost love that we haven't forgotten about so. was amazing today. I love the way it was all presented to us today. You know, we wanted to keep it, it's going to be so magical with the, the, the stage, the music, the way I'm going to look. We didn't want to go inside that world for you until we were ready and you were ready to see it. <laughs> um, and so we did it for you today so you could hear the real material without all of the other stuff around it because it's so beautiful the way it is. Um, so we just wanted to give you those things and let you hear it and imagine it for yourself for a while. Um, and that's kind of the, what, what the book gave you. You know, you build the world for yourself. It's very different from the film. Very different. Um, because of, we have the musicalization. We have the, the characters are opened up a little bit more. You know their past. Like for instance, mine. We get to go to. We, we know Italy. We know her sister. We know her past. We know her present, and we we think we know her future. So it's um, it's actually just kind of an explosion of the show. I know this is very special for you. It's very rare you get to create a brand new character in a brand new musical from scratch. What has the whole experience been like for you? Well, you know, Bart Shear said to me yesterday, he said, it's amazing to do something, the right thing at the right time. And I felt, I feel like pinching myself because uh, I've done a lot of things that I've loved, but I've kind of made the, the whole, the peg fit into the square, you know, the circle fit into the square. Um, I, this is something that has been built and for me to sing the way I want to sing, the way my heart wants to sing. And the character is a combination of so much that I want to do as an actor. So um, it's one of the best gifts I could ever imagine having. And it's coming right when I've become a mother of two. I'm a mother of two in the show. The thought of, of leaving that or losing that informs so much of my choices in the show. Um, it's it's my age. Everything is is right where I want it to be, and I'm I couldn't be happier or more grateful. And working with Jason and Marsha, what a gorgeous score! Uh, 
The score does so much for us. Steve and I say it's actually hard not to just let it take us away. We have to be smart and stay on top of our game to to build on top of that because it it does everything. It it gives us emotion. It, it stops us in our tracks. And um, so hopefully the combination of us all working together will even be greater. But the music and the score, the, the script itself is just it's an indicator of, of everything you want to feel. It gives it gives it to you. It's brilliant. So first of all, welcome to Broadway in a musical. Thank you very much. How do you feel? More excited than I've ever felt about anything. I, I moved to New York with the dream of being in a Broadway musical and it's taken 15 years and I'm really glad it's this one. You know, because every time you got one, it was like TV got in the way. Yeah, I mean, I was the king of workshopping like every new musical in town for a lot of years. And then I uh, would get wonderfully waylaid by some for the most part, bad television projects, so I'm excited to be, have that off my plate for a while and be focused on the theater. Well, this is very exciting. What has it been like working on this show? Um, wow, it's been the single most extraordinary, fulfilling, artistic journey I've ever had. Uh, Bart and Jason and Marsha and Kelly are four of our greatest artists working in the theater, and so the material is good and smart, and the music is extraordinary, and she doesn't sing very well, but other than that, she's okay. It's been great. I mean, can you imagine? It's been the best. Talk about the role you're going to play. I play Robert Kincaid, who's a National Geographic photographer who travels the world alone for the most part, taking pictures. He's a Korean War vet. I think he's uncomfortable around people. And for the first time in his life, he meets a person that makes him feel something at its deepest <coughs> level. And it's the most powerful thing he ever experiences in his life. He takes that with him forever. And let's talk about this beautiful score. Oh man, I mean, what is there to say? I mean, it's like, Jason has masterfully melded these two worlds. Robert Kincaid, who has a kind of rural, folksy sensibility to the music, and Francesca, who's got this European, Italian, kind of classic, legitimate feeling about it. And he's melded them when they sing together into this wonderful hybrid. Uh, I can't say enough about it. It's the most beautiful music uh, I've heard in a long time. And Marsha's book? Extraordinary. Marsha's uh, an unbelievable guide in terms of the book. The, the words are efficient and smart and simple and sweet. And nothing feels like overly hit on the head. It's just very well written. And um, Bart, of course, is the master of scope. So he knows how to wrangle actors and designers and writers. And so the whole thing is uh, really heading in the right direction. Now, the duet we heard, yeah. talk about that song and where it fits into the show. It happens about the middle of Act Two, where both of them really, for the first time, start to think about the depth of their feelings and the, what, and the decision that has to be made, what to do about it. So it's this extraordinary piece of music that tries to uh, encapsulate all of that. You know, it's early in the process, but if you could sum up the best part of the experience with working on this musical for you, Stephen, what is it? Oh, singing Jason Robert Brown music with Kelly O'Hara. Are you kidding? That's it doesn't fine. get me better than that, does I'd it? I'd die right now. I'd be just fine. I mean, I don't want to die right now, but I could. Then it would be fine.